Meter again for Survival Dispatch Insider. So we've done a number of videos and articles on communications, digital modes, things like that. And one of the questions I often get from people is, uh, what radio should I buy? And you know, they get their ham license. I run a, I run a team that does uh, free testing every month uh, in the Denver, Colorado area. And I always get people come up to me and say, what radio should I buy? Or on the Facebook pages, et cetera. And my answer always starts with, it depends. And it's kind of become a standing joke with, you know, if you've ever watched any of the videos with, with Chris or uh, John, they, you know, say, hey, we'll ask Nick and he'll tell us it depends. So we've done uh, a couple of different ones. So this particular one, we're looking at low budget, go kit, box radio, whatever you want to call it. And so with a technician license, don't need a general license for this. What can you do? And how can you start experimenting with some of the other different modes other than just voice. So this particular kit I threw together um, and, and with some equipment that I had, I won't say laying around, but I repurposed. And so we'll pull some of this out. We'll get back to this bag in a minute, but as we I will talk about those. So let's start off with, you know, here's a roll of uh, coax for hooking the radio up to an antenna. One of the antennas that I particularly like for um, portability and durability are, are these copper J poles. This particular one is designed that you know breaks down, so it screws together there. There's a gentleman that makes these, um, and we'll post the link to his site, but um, jpole-antenna.com. And I've got a number of antennas from him, and they are very durable. I've got a couple that sit on my uh, deck, and. Uh, you know, it's night. You can mount them pretty high by just putting a piece of PVC pole and then sticking this bottom end in the piece of uh, in the end of the, of the PVC pipe and elevate it up a few feet. Mine kind of hides up in the trees. Nobody sees it. And if you're in a, an antenna restricted area, you can usually get away with hiding one of these on your deck and making it look like a umbrella pole or something like that. I remember somebody telling me. Um, so again, pretty durable. Now, if, if you're into welding and copper and stuff, there are designs out there that you can build these yourself. Um, I did try that many, many years ago, and after burning my hands, I uh, decided that it was cheaper and less effort. <laughs> Just buy one. Um, and they're not expensive, right, as antennas go. So let's look at what we have in here. So this is uh, a BTEC radio, and it's basically the mobile version of, of Baofeng. This is one of their older ones that I've had sitting around. Um, they've got newer ones that are um, they're just different, they're nicer. But this particular one is what we call tri-band. So it has that uh, 220 megahertz band or the 1.25 meter band in it. And there, there's a number of reasons why I like that. And that is um, it's not a very popular band. So if you've got your own group, communications group, mutual assistance group, whatever you want to call it, of, of like-minded people, um, it's a band that you can go to and use, and um, you're not guaranteed that nobody else is going to be there, but there's less probability of somebody being there. In some areas, you'll find that uh, there are some 220 repeaters up, and they're hardly ever used, unless they're linked to a 2-meter repeater or a 440 repeater. So if you find a standalone 2-meter repeater, um, you'll probably listen to it and hardly hear anybody on it. So, you know, a place to you to go. And I know uh, where I live, there's, there's several of us that get on one of the 220 repeaters and we have never heard anybody else on it, ever. Um, so, again, nice little radio. Um, they're, they're very inexpensive for a mobile radio. Uh, usually they're around about 25 watts. They do have some 50 watt ones, but 25 watts is, is pretty good to get you going. I have a little power supply in here. I have no idea of the make. I've had one of these, couple of these sitting around for some time. Uh, low wattage because these radios don't need a lot of power. Um, I added, I, I cut out a piece of uh, uh, plywood. It's not very thick. And that just sits in the bottom here. So the whole thing will just lift out if I wanted to. And I could sit it wherever I wanted to operate. If I'm operating somewhere, put the box out of the way. I've seen some kits that people build them into the box. Well, now the box is going to sit on the table. And if you're doing emergency communications to somebody, that might not be uh, an option. Um, as with all your radios, here's, here's a copy of the manual for this particular radio. I just printed it out, uh, and that sits in there too. Usually, it's not in this case, um, 
I might also have a cheat sheet on frequencies that are being used in the area. Um, one of the things you'll want to check in your area is what are the simplex frequencies. And usually you have what they call a frequency coordination council. They're the people that assign frequencies for repeaters and simplex operations. So make sure you're using an approved frequency and not just jumping on any old frequency and accidentally be on the input to a repeater. And then you're causing interference and that can be an issue. Um, I also got, um, we'll do some close-ups here, but there's also a uh, Anderson J-Pole connector back here. So the power supply goes into that. But if I had a battery, I can just take the, the supply from the battery, disconnect that power supply, plug another one in here. The other thing that I added to this, and we'll do some close-up pics so you can see it, because you can't from where you are, but there's actually an LED strip in here. Uh, and um, I found some of those real cheap. They just self-sticky, sticks in there, and it just kind of lights up the whole side of the inside of the case uh, when the power's on. Um, so like I said, this radio does uh, the 220 band. Uh, I've got the coax to hook the antenna up with. Um, there are frequencies in the 220 band that are specific for digital use. So with digital, um, you, use it, you can use less power. You can send a message. Uh, you can type the message and then send, hit send and it will send it. Just like you're sending an email or anything else, it's over the air. Uh, the other nice thing is that the receiver can leave their computer and, and laptop, uh, laptop and uh, radio turned on not be there and it would re still receive the message you just scroll down the screen you'll see a message is received um, the other nice thing with doing it digital messaging is less people are going to hear it you know anybody's got a scanner out there can hear what you're saying on voice uh, but unless they uh, capture the video or uh, the audio s uh, digital signal where you send it and or have a computer set up with a program on um, not so easy to intercept so even though it's, it's not coded, it's not encrypted, uh, it's what I call security through obscurity. Nobody knows where you are. And especially if you've got a plan with your group that you switch frequencies every so often and you've got a little card with that, you know what it is, you're not saying it over the radio, that you know at the top of the hour or the bottom of the hour you're going to switch to another frequency. Um, again, it just makes it more difficult for somebody to find and listen to what you're saying or doing. All right, so the software I'm talking about, uh, I've mentioned a couple of times, is called FL Digi. It's a free software out there developed by some hams. Um, and with all that kind of free stuff, you know, a lot of them ask for donations. I would suggest, you know, just be, just be a good sport and, and to contribute if they're asking for that. Um, there's some other software for programming radios uh, that's out there. And um, same thing, you know, every time I download a new version, I send them, you know, five bucks, ten bucks or whatever. If everybody does that, it just kind of helps the cause. Uh, the other thing that we have here, not mentioned yet, is the signal link. Um, so this is a device that connects between your radio um, to your laptop or computer or whatever you're using. Um, and runs all the different types of, of digital programs that are out there. And some are better for HF, some are better for uh, the VHF or line of sight modes. Uh, and just, it just depends on a number of things. So you both need to be using the same one, obviously. I have a bag of cables here. Now the signal link device can be used with almost any radio. And you go to their website, you can download it or search online, but I also have a hard copy of it. Um, a catalog that tells you, based on the radio, what there's jumper pins in there and what pin configuration you need. So if I pull one of these cables out, um, you'll see that it's got a code for the cable. And that one I haven't written on. So I can't tell you, oh, it's, it, that's actually on the cable here. So this is for a Baofeng HT. So here's the Baofeng connector. This uh, RJ45 connector goes into the back of this. So this cable goes into the back of the signal link. This goes into your computer and a couple of little settings and you're good to go. Um, this particular cable, these are some of these are marked with the radio and some of them have their code on. Some of them I've marked up. Um, so this particular one I've marked, and this, is, this goes to an ICOM 208 radio, as well as the ID880 uh, and the IC706. So I know that those are three ICOM radios um, that this will connect to, and that's, that's the data port on the back of those radios. Um, and then, like I mentioned, so the pin configuration that you need, or the jumper configuration is on here. So just, you undo the screws on the front, pull the little card out, change the jumper settings depending on what radio you're using. So this particular one will do 
uh, the BTEC 25X4, which is the new version of this one, as well as the Yaesu FT60, which is another common uh, handheld radio that, that's, that's out there. So all I have to do is, in this case, I think it's actually this one, it plugs into the, the speaker port, the microphone port right here, into this radio, uh, make sure the pins are right, and um, it's good to go. Uh, so I have cables for a whole bunch of different radios, uh, most of which I have those radios. Uh, that's just not configured for this one. Um, and that's it really. I mean, you hook your power up and hook it up to an antenna and you're good to go. So this will do voice, obviously, if I plug the microphone in, or it will do digital modes on the three bands, so VHF, uh, two meters, uh, 70 centimeters, the 440 band, as well as the 220 band. And, and that's where I kind of like to go with this. And, and some of us done some experimenting with low power. You can go quite a considerable distance uh, using that if you've got your antenna up high enough. And, and with like most of these things, it's all about the antenna. The higher you can get the antenna, the better. Um, you can use a wire antenna if you want to. Um, obviously, you can coil it up and, and put in the box. Uh, I've got, like I said, the copper ones that, that break down this particular one. So um, you can get on the air experimenting with the digital stuff for not a lot of money. Uh, if, you, if you have a battery you use, this radio will work perfectly fine with it. Um, Radio is not expensive, especially these, these older ones uh, work perfectly fine. And uh, you can find them around. Uh, I know I've got a couple of them floating around. And, and these devices, the SignalLink device, um, usually about a hundred and a quarter brand new. Every now and again, you can find them. Uh, uh, somebody's you know, getting rid of them. And I, I've got a couple and one of them I did acquire that somebody was getting rid of. Um, I would suggest that, you know, as always, get cables for, for your different radios. You don't want to do, one of the things I mentioned is you don't want to do uh, digital stuff for a long period of time on a handheld radio. And the reason is that those radios are designed for short transmissions. And so you don't want to key up your radio um, for you know, a minute um, making a transmission and keep doing that because the radio is just going to overheat. It's not going to cool enough. That's why these radios have these fins on to help cool them. Plus this one has a little fan on the back. Most, most radios do uh, some kind of uh, cooling mechanism. So even though I do have the cables for the, for the BTEC stuff and the um, Baofang radios, um, I don't often use it on a handheld. Only if I'm like doing a short demonstration somewhere, I'll put one in the other side of the room and do that with. As always, you want to protect your electronics equipment, especially your communications equipment, GPS stuff, things like that. And so, um, you know, these bags that you can get through Survival Dispatch Insider um, help protect your equipment. I keep a lot of my stuff in them, uh, you know, because I want to make sure it's going to work. Uh, there's stuff I don't because I use it day in and day out, but then there's other stuff that I have in here. So, as always, uh, if you like the video, hit like below. If you've got some questions, ask. We'll, we'll do our very best to capture those and answer them. And uh, come on over to Survival Dispatch Insider. We've got tons of articles on all these types of communication stuff, medical stuff, uh, navigation, you name it, it's in there. And uh, for, for you know pennies a month, you can buy, can't buy a cup of coffee for what uh, um, you know, we, the, the monthly fee is. So, Again, as always, uh, be safe and uh, hope to catch you on the air sometime. For now, goodbye. <music>